Welcome to Weddings Unveiled, the podcast designed to help you build a productive, profitable wedding or event business. Here's your host, Angela Profit. Hi, y'all. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of Weddings Unveiled, professional tips and secrets on wedding planning and event design, where we take you behind the scenes of our past experiences in the industry and share with you what we have learned from them and how they have made us stronger. This podcast will help you grow a productive and profitable business to launch you into success within the hospitality industry. Before we get started today, I want to ask you something. Are you looking for the missing piece of the puzzle to grow your business? Well, I want to invite you to watch my free online training on how I went from hobbyist to celebrity wedding planner and how you can do it too. You will discover the puzzle pieces that will absolutely transform your business from hobbyist to like, hell yeah, I can do this full time. On puzzle piece one, I'm going to go all into personality. Puzzle piece two, how to keep the high quality clients happy. Puzzle piece three, I'm going to talk about what separates the good from the great. On four best kept secrets to profitability and all about implementing the strategies. And five, if you're going to attract the best, come on, people, you got to be the best. And then I'm going to show you how to create the magic and put it all together for you and your clients. So don't wait another minute. Go on over to go.angelaprofit.com. That's G O dot Angela Profit, two F's and two T's dot com and watch my free videos and download my free workbooks that will take your business to the next level. Hi y'all, it's Angela Profit. Thank you so much for joining me on another episode of Weddings Unveiled. Today I'm super, super excited to interview Chris Carmichael. Chris is the CEO of one of my very, very favorite apps called Vlog Easy. It's V as in Victor, not B as in blog. I talk about this app a lot, and some of the questions I get is, can you please phonetically spell that out, Angela? Because apparently I have a Southern accent, and people can't understand when I'm saying vlog versus blog. But if you know me well, I do tons more videos, which is really what vlogging's about. And we'll get more into that today if you don't know what it is or if you're not comfortable doing it. We're going to talk about that today. So Chris, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Hey everybody. Thank you for having me. So um, before we kick off and talk to the audience about where you came from and where you grew up and all that stuff, I have to confess to the audience and people who know me well, they know that I used an app formerly vlog easy was called BitSmash. And so I hope it's okay if I like say that. Is that okay? <laughs> of course. Of course. So um I don't know how I found this app. I think that I was speaking at a conference and someone t- told me they used it and it saved them editing time. And I'm like, wait, what? Save editing time? Because I know how to edit videos, but it's really not a good use of my time. But it's a lot faster for me to just do it myself sometimes than it is to outsource and pay someone to do it. So I downloaded this app and it was like an instantly, I was like in love with this app. I'm like, oh my God, when I'm quiet, it basically, I don't have to use a teleprompter. It just, I can't, if you do videos, you know what I mean? Like, I can't even tell you how much time it saved me. So we go to Cabo in December with a bunch of businesses and no one had heard of it. But one of the initiatives and one of the goals of every single business owner, why they were there was to learn how to do video. So everyone down, downloads it on their phone, except one of my own team members who is like our social media expert because she doesn't have enough space on her phone. That's a whole different story. And so we get back into the U.S. Well, everybody uses it. They're super uncomfortable. And it's like really fun to do it in a group setting because people like start breaking out in halves and stuff. I mean, that's not what was funny. 
But I was like, guys, it's just a flipping phone. Like you're just talking to me. Like it's us. We did this on the last day. I did it strategically on the last day. So everyone felt comfortable together. We were in the same house for like seven days. So we were practically fam family by the end. And so we get back to the U S and my team members like, but smash is gone. I'm like, what do you mean it's gone? She's like, it's not in the app store. I'm like, what do you mean? And so I'm like, I got to stock this person and figure out like, where is this app? Um, so can you tell us real quick, like what happened? Did you just decide to rebrand? Yeah. So, um, we actually, we had an app called BitSmash previously before that. And before that, an app called Slinger. Um, and we've been building apps for about four or five years now, um, various, different various, various different types of apps. And um, we realized that when we had BitSmash, it was both a social network and a creation tool. And we realized nobody really wants another social network. There's already Facebook and Instagram and Snapchat, all these social platforms. And we thought that that was kind of stealing away from the beauty and utility of the editing uh, part of the app. So we realized we had to split that, we had to split it up into two and uh, Vlog Easy was the result. And um, Vlog Easy is essentially uh, the easiest place to create content on the phone. Uh, I know I'm biased when I say that, but it is 100% true. Um, yes. Anybody who vlogs knows how hard jump cut editing is and how kind of tedious it is. Um, um, and anybody who doesn't know jump cut editing, it's like you basically remove all the parts where there's no talking in the video and it makes like a very quick cut uh, style of content. So we basically um, created Vlog Easy where that it basically allows you to just talk to your camera. It allows you to talk to your phone. All you do is hit record, start talking. You can talk for five minutes, 10 minutes. And then by the end, you just hit record again and it will automatically jump cut edit for you and do all of that work. So you don't have to do any of it. Um, and that's, that's basically the, the basic utility of the app. It's amazing. I just, I, I just, you know, you people think like I did this branding strategy workshop the other day and it's like the top three brands in the world, Google being one of them, you can go to Google and find anything except what happened to BitSmash. <laughs> like it is not on Google. And so I'm like laying in bed one night and I'm, and I had to teach a strategy class the next day about video. And I'm like, over the weekend, I downloaded literally 10 other apps. Like I'm not even exaggerating 10 and I did not like any of them. Well, TikTok was okay, but it's not what BitSmash did. And so I'm like, I'm just going to stalk the, this app person one more time. And I've already like done my homework. I like sent an email to my EO group, which is internationally. And then that's how I got other information about, oh, well, they work with this company and this company. And so I'm getting all this information, but I'm like, what happened to this app? So I go on to Facebook and um, if you've been listening to me for a while, you know how I feel about Facebook. It's totally a love-hate relationship. Today, I love it because it got me in touch with Chris. <laughs> but I'm like, WTF, where's this app? And then, you know, immediately I'm like, wait, it's 1.30 in the morning. Like, this is a freaking chat bot. And then yeah. and I'm all about automation and bots now. And then I'm like asking questions. I'm like, this is not a bot. Like, this is a person. And so, and then, you know, you started telling me like, it's this, it's that. And it's almost like, as cheesy as it sounds, I'm like, oh my God, God is answering my prayers. <laughs> uh, and so when I go to class the next day to teach it, I'm like so excited. Like I couldn't sleep all night. I'm like, oh my God. And I'm, I like stay up and I'm like doing vlogs through the night, you know, just playing with it and figuring it because on BitSmash, you actually, I feel like I knew you even before that because you had all these tutorials mm -hmm. and you know, like, this is how you do this. This is how you do that. And I, I don't think you have tutorials yet in vlog. Do, I, I haven't seen any. No, we're, have no, any? we're making, we're making them right now. Um, and, uh, yeah, when you, it was f so funny when you first met me, um, I, I found you in, in an old, uh, chat room, I think in, uh, on the BitSmash page. Um, and it was just funny because, you know, BitSmash was dead to us. We've already gone on to vlog easy. And then it was, it was you basically freaking out uh -huh. that, that Smash didn't exist anymore and uh -huh. we can't get rid of it and we need to keep it around. And, you know, when we're, when we're building these apps, um, we actually launched that exact same week that you messaged us. Oh. So, you know, building these apps, it takes, can take months and even years. Mm -hmm. um, it's been a multi-year process for us. So when we're in the midst of creating these products, we don't get to see 
um, you know, how the market reacts to it while we're building it because, you know, we have no idea. So as soon as we launched it, um, you started messaging us and saying, this is something we, I need, like I can't live without. And that's actually the dream of any startup is to, is to hear that from any of your, any of your users, because if they can't live without it, then that means it's doing something right. And, um, and we haven't really had that moment yet for any of our apps. And you were the actual first person that kind of gave us that moment that was like, okay, we're, we're onto something here. Like we need to keep yeah. pursuing this. It was just so refreshing to hear you obsess over it. And not only that, you said you were teaching with it um, yeah. and, and teaching everybody else. So um, that, that just made, gave us so much kind of fuel to keep going. Oh my gosh. Yes. It like when people are like, what are your top five apps? And you know, they, it's funny cause I'm the nerd the first of every month I'm like in the app store, like what's the newest thing out there? And like, I'll try it, but still to this day, like my top two right now, which I've shared this with you is like Marco Polo, which does something very different from communicating with my team and then vlog easy. And the reason it is those two is the outcome and the outcome is all about productivity and saving time It's exactly. not because it's fun. It's not because of anything else other than it saves me a shit ton of time. Like I can, and I can do it on the go, which yep. it's not like you can just whip out your computer. I mean, I can, but it's like, I'm a girl in a bar sometimes. Like, I mean, with my client, you know, for my clients, like doing events and it's like, I can sit there and, and do stuff on my phone when everybody else is getting wasted. And I'm just like waiting for the time to pass by. So yep. it's like, I can't sit and do nothing. Like my brain doesn't work that way. So I just kind of jumped in, but let's back up. So our audience, they don't know anything about you. Um, yep. I knew way more about you than, well, I've gotten to know you more, <laughs> but for our audience who they don't know anything about you and apps or anything like that, like tell us a little bit about your background and why did you start building apps in the first place? Yeah. So um, I guess um, my background, I don't, I don't know how far back to go, but uh, I guess in, in university, uh, when I was in, in Canada, um, I started a company my first week of school. I knew I wanted to be an entrepreneur ever since I was about 13 years old. Um, and I started my first company refilling ink cartridges for students on campus. Um, I, it was just when Facebook came out in 2006, I believe, or 2007. Um, and uh, I had the first Facebook group of my school, and it, it ended up becoming one of the biggest ones. And um, I was known as the ink man at my school. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I was giving $15 ink cartridge refills. And for me, it was 97% profit margins. Um, I was getting the, the ink from uh, the States uh, wholesale. And I had lineups every night of students just, just getting their ink cartridges refilled. And, you know, I became known as that guy on campus. So um, I ended up winning some awards from that. Um, I thought it was such an invigorating feeling to be, to be providing value for people. Um, and I, that eventually evolved into wholesale, uh, promotional gear. So like lanyards, t-shirts, hats, um, I sourced everything from, uh, from China. Um, and then in my last year of school, I ended up deciding I was literally my last semester. I was, I was just about to do my final exams. And I said, you know what? I, I never came to school to grad. I never came here, you know, to, to graduate. I never cared about the degree. I always came here so that I came here so that I could learn about business and what was funny was I never learned anything about business while I was in school. I learned everything from business from running my businesses. Um, so I ended up leaving. Um, I ended up dropping out of school and I moved to China from there. Um, and after I moved to China, um, I realized I wanted to start a tech company for the first time. You know, they can scale really quickly. Um, they can, you know, they can be sold for a lot. And, and the two other businesses I was running weren't really scalable like that. So I decided I want to go into um, into uh, tech. And one of the ideas that I had was I was selling lanyards and, and name badges basically to a whole bunch of conferences, a lot of TED conferences actually. And um, I, I came up with this idea that um, if you could, if you could meet somebody at an event um, and scan, actually I was speaking at an event um, and, uh, and I had a whole bunch of people coming up to me afterwards asking, uh, you know, some had opportunities, some people didn't really have anything to say. And I was putting the opportunity business cards in my right pocket and the, then the bad opportunity business cards in my left pocket. And then I forgot which pocket was which afterwards. So I had no idea who all these people coming up to me were after. Um, so I ended up coming up with this idea where if you, if you meet somebody at an event, this is way back in like 2010, I believe. If yeah. you meet somebody at an event, you can scan the 
QR code on their name badge and then their profile will pop up and then you can save them as a contact and, and you have like information of who they are. So instead of just randomly meeting people and forgetting them, the idea was, you know, you can offer these name badges that you can scan. So I set out to build that, but then I realized if I needed, if I want to get the profiles of the people at the event, I have to build an event management software. Um, and, um, and to, to basically get all the, the registrations and the profiles. So then I decided I was going to, with one of my, one of my best friends and uh, business partners at the time, um, we ended up building um, a whole event management suite, which took us about two years to actually build. And we didn't realize how long it was going to take. But as we were building, I realized we had to build more and more and more features. Um, so it got dra dragged on for a really long time. And um, by the end, we actually won our first client, which was Facebook. They licensed our software for a 300-person event. Um, we charged a really good amount of money. We, we couldn't believe that that was happening as our first paid client. Uh, they had zero bugs somehow as, as the first experience, which never happens. Um, and then we started getting all these TED clients and TED made us a partner on their website. And we couldn't believe it. We were like, finally, we made it like after all these, all these two years of hard work. And then all of a sudden this, the, the code started to break down and we it, basically, um, a lot of the code that was built was spaghetti code and it wasn't actually, you know, uh, it wasn't actually robust. Um, so we ended up losing that company and losing everything, um, which really sucked. So, uh, eventually Vine came around, um, uh, Vine had launched at that time. And, uh, one of my other best friends who was one of the co-founders of that company, it was called attendee. Um, <clears throat> he basically started making vines at the office and, um, he ended up, uh, growing up to 10 million followers on Vine. He became number three in the world. Wow. Um, and we basically switched all our focus from that startup to making sure like he was going to grow on Vine. Um, and then we basically started the first Vine talent agency uh, with a guy you probably heard of named Gary Vaynerchuk. Yep. Uh, and uh, we started the first Vine talent agency with him. Um, and after about two months, I just was not happy with, with what I was doing. I wasn't, um, I had less equity than everybody in the company. And, and I, I really, for me, like I really need to have something that feels like my own baby. So yeah. I ended up really, I had to go back to Canada, try to figure out, you know, what I want to do with my life. Um, <clears throat> so I'm back to Canada and um, I realized, um, so my, my best friend, Jerome, Jerome Jar, um, he said, uh, you know, I've got an audience now. Let's build an app for my audience. Um, and I said, wow, this is, this is crazy. Let's do it. So came up with this idea called Crater. And Crater was basically an idea where um, uh, fans of influencers can submit ideas they want to see their favorite influencer do. So let's say they want to see Angela Prophet um, take a selfie in Tokyo and put it on Instagram. Somebody could post that idea. The fans could like that idea with two cent likes. So every like is basically contributing two cents. You can contribute as many as you want. And then if the creator fulfills it, then, um, then the creator keeps the money and then everybody gets a notification that it's been fulfilled. Um, and so we ended up building that out. My big mistake was I built the team way too big. Um, and, um, and, uh, that ended up uh, crumbling a little bit, but, uh, Jerome and I hadn't seen each other in six months and we said, let's go to Iceland, uh, together. And this was just when he was like really up and coming on Vine. And he ended up tweeting out that uh, he ended up tweeting out, "Hey, I'm going to do a meetup at this mall on this day," and um, and then on the meetup day there were six thousand kids that ended up destroying this mall. Um, you can type in uh, Jerome Jar Iceland Mall on oh Google, my God. and you'll, you'll see the footage of that. Um, and it was it was it was insane, um, and uh, and very dangerous. And then while I was there, there was you know I was basically holding Jerome's jacket. And uh, some of the kids, there was so much demand for selfies with Jerome. Some of the kids started to recognize me from Jerome's vines. And then they started swarming me and taking pictures with me. And I was like, no, 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 I'm not famous. I don't have oh a following. Um, and uh, but, but all of a sudden, they started tagging me on Instagram and Twitter. And my, I could feel my phone vibrating in my pocket because all these kids were like, who is this guy? And so they were swarming me. And I have no, my mom, I think, followed me on Twitter or something. Um, and... Uh, <laughs> And I ended up, uh, we ended up getting escorted out and I was actually supposed to move back to New York with Jerome right after that. And then he's like, why don't you just stay in Iceland for a while? Like you're famous here. And I'm like, you know what? I am going to stay here. 
So he announced on his Instagram and his Twitter, um, <laughs> my best friend staying in Iceland and, uh, and, uh, the kids went crazy cause nobody ever really stays there. You just kind of go there for uh, a weekend and leave. Um, and I said, I, I would love to live here for a few months. So the kids went crazy and my Twitter and Instagram were exploding, but like only in Iceland. Um, and, uh, and, uh, on my third day there, I started realizing that all these kids were on Snapchat and this was 2000, January, 2014. Um, uh-huh. all these kids were on Snapchat and after a while I realized it wasn't just the kids, it was the parents and it wasn't just the parents, it was the adults. And, or it was the grandparents. Yeah. yeah. Um, it was the grandparents and it, Snapchat was, was like part of their culture in 2014. And in America at the time it was just being called a sexting tool, but in Iceland it was mainstream and grandparents were snapping each other. And I was like, what is going on here? So I started digging a little bit more and I started, I created my own Snapchat account and started posting stories and this little following I had in Iceland, uh, it started to grow. Um, I started getting a whole bunch of views on my stories. So then I just stories on Snapchat. Um, and I kind of used it like a, an influencer would, I guess. Um, even though I didn't have a following, even though these kids were, you know, the only people that were following me. Um, and, uh, and then I told Jerome, like, get on Snapchat. It's about to be the next thing. Like, trust me on this. And yeah. he was still really focused on buying it. Um, so he, he, he didn't really want to jump on. And it was still really early in Snapchat uh, Snapchat's time, like the, the servers were still crashing and all that kind of stuff. So after about three months, I ended up leaving and moving to New York with Jerome. And when I got there, I'm like, dude, like get on Snapchat. It's coming. It's going to be bigger than Vine. Um, and he still was really focused on Vine as everybody else was. And then about three months later, um, he realized he wanted to jump in on, on Snapchat. Um, he heard about some other creators that had uh, started promoting theirs. So he jumped on and, and basically promoted everything he had to grow his Snapchat. And he built about 800,000 views in about three weeks, which blew wow. everything out of the water. There was no other profile that was even close. And every time he would post, the, sh- the servers would crash because they had to distribute that one video to 800,000 people for the first time. And their servers just weren't built for that. So you know, if he was posting a story with 30 videos, that was like 26 million videos that had to be distributed that they just couldn't handle. So he would crash their servers at the time. <laughs> unbelievable. Um, <laughs> and then he ended up promoting my Snapchat account. Yeah, he, unbelievable. And he, he ended up promoting my Snapchat account. And overnight, I got about 150,000 followers from his 800,000. So instantly, him and I are the top two on Snapchat in the world. I had already been snapping for about six months. Um, and, uh, and then all of a sudden for the first time, brands started reaching out to me. Um, and, uh, so all of a sudden I'm doing brand deals with Universal, Taco Bell, Lionsgate, Fox, uh, Disney. Um, and it, and it blew my mind cause I was, go- I went from ramen noodles for years and years, just all of a sudden $10,000 a story. Um, and I just couldn't believe it. So I said to myself, I am never going back to entrepreneurship. There's no way that life is for me. I love being a creator. This is like uh-huh. what I love. I was motiv- my, my whole shtick on, um, on, on Snapchat was like motivational, inspirational style storytelling, um, always had some sort of a message at the end, um, that was like, was positive. Um, and, uh, and that, that was basically my, my whole thing on there. And I had so many, so many, uh, I guess lessons from entrepreneurship that, um, that, uh, were able to, uh, that allowed me to kind of give like motivational, inspirational style talks. So the kids loved it. I was changing people's lives. Like I would get essays from people saying how much I changed their life. And I'm like, I'm never going back to entrepreneurship. And then when I went to South by Southwest that following year, I started telling brands like get on Snapchat. It's coming. It's going to be the next big thing. I can help you with consulting. And they were like, why would we post on Snapchat if it's going to disappear after that doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. And I was like, damn, there is no place on mobile right now where you can watch a vertical video story and like vertical, vertical video is coming. It's going to be the next big thing. Nobody realizes it yet. I've been on, I've been making vertical videos on Snapchat for, I guess, almost a year now. Like, um, it was so obvious to me. Somebody has got to build the YouTube of vertical video. Yeah. And this was 2015 at the time. Um, so I got two of my ex co-founders from crater and we basically came together and said, Hey, like, let's build this together. Like somebody's going to do it if we don't do it. And, um, and at the time I was in a mindset of like, I'm not going back to entrepreneurship. That was way too hard. 
I'm never going back there again. And I even told the team, like, I'm, I'll put my Snapchat money into this, but I'm not being the CEO. We got to find a CEO for this company. Um, so I uh, ended up uh, meeting Troy Carter. I'm not sure if you've ever heard of him, but he mm-hmm. was uh, Lady Gaga's old manager. Um, okay. He's kind of a tech guru, um, an investor. And I ended up approaching him and he said, I love the idea. I think what you guys are doing is a 10. I just launched this new incubator. You guys are in. He goes, who's the CEO? And I go, oh, we don't know who the CEO is yet. And he goes, no, 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 no. That's, that's not the right answer. You're the CEO. And if anybody else, if you tell anybody else, otherwise, you're never going to raise money. So that never mm-hmm. leaves the room. You're going to be the CEO of the company. Yep. For me, I'm having an identity crisis at that point because I'm like, I can't do this. Like, there's no possible way I'm not going down that road again. Um, is the story too long, by the way? No, this is awesome. I love okay, it. Okay. Okay, cool. Um, so, um, so all of a sudden, out of nowhere, for the first time in my life, I started drinking every single night. Um, I was depressed because I'm like, I, I know I have to like take the reins of this, but I'm not going to be in, I'm not going to be, uh, I can't be a creator and an entrepreneur at the same time. There's just, I can't spread myself too thin like that. Um, it's just not going to work. So for about a month, I was, I, I drank every night for the first time in my life. And on day 30, I said, I'm not, I'm, I, 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 I got to quit drinking. Yeah. And then I ended up drinking for three years. Um, three years exactly um that was just too scary that it came out of nowhere but i did decide that i'm going to build this company and i'm not going to be a creator anymore and that kind of really hurt me on the inside but i said okay like if this works it's way bigger than being a creator like you got you got to try this so i jumped right back in entrepreneurship again <laughs> i ended up telling troy sorry uh we're not taking the uh, investment um um, just because it was too early for us at the time. Um, and, uh, it was just, yeah, it was basically too early for us. So I ended up, um, going back, uh, to entrepreneurship and we basically built a few products, uh, over two years, but we were completely unfunded. Um, our girlfriends and one of my co-founders parents kept us alive. Um, uh, and, uh, we were scraping by scraping by scraping by funds, and then just last November, the founders of Candy Crush uh, found us and said they want to invest in us. And, um, and it was a really long, drawn-out process. But, uh, uh, and we almost quit so many times. But finally, 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 we raised funding. Um, and, uh, and yeah, so here, here we are today. That's an amazing story, an amazing ride. And so a couple of things, <laughs> yep. um, just nuggets to come out of that is um, – you know, your heart was in it for the right reason and all about creating things for people. And so um, for those of you listening that are like, I just don't understand social media, which I was one of those girls, by the way, where I'm like, I'm not getting on Snapchat. Like the shit disappears. Like, what's the point? Because at that time I was monetizing my knowledge through YouTube. I mean, this was years ago. It's like, now I look back, these people that call themselves um, experts and they're like 21 or 22. I'm like, you, I was doing a podcast with this guy, Jim McCarthy. He's like, they haven't shit their first business, business diaper. And like yeah. you said earlier, you don't know what you don't know. And they don't teach this stuff in school. Exactly. You learn all of this stuff through experience by doing it, by like failing crazy, over and over again. Yeah. Like these crazy stories where it's like, you know, I'm a poor college kid. And then, you know, the number one thing that I can say, which I think like you didn't say this word, but it's all about consistency. And yep. I feel like you saw the light of like, okay, I'm going to put consistent stuff out there and, uh, and inspirational and positive and people need that in their life. But exactly they also need to see like you're a real person and I can't even tell you how many people from like my brand from two and a half years ago to now, because I got a new team member who actually interned with me, who was like, okay, in eight weeks I came on thinking that you and your team were like this way. And then now that I've gotten to know you and I'm around you every day, she's like, you need to show who you are to the outside world. And I'm like, why do people care? Like, I don't understand. Like, I really didn't. And so I remember I was on a board for events and they made me run the Snapchat account. I was pissed. I'm like, this is so effing stupid. Like, (laughs) this shit's going to disappear. I was pissed. And I never got a Snapchat account. So I didn't, I was not in that world. And so we're like, 
Facebook messengering at like 2 a.m. my time. And I'm like, I got to get up and teach a class. It's starting at 6 a.m. in the morning. And so, and I'm like running off of adrenaline and you're like sending me links of stuff. And I like, I literally live in my bubble. It's really bad. Like, I don't know who people are. Like I'll work with people. Like we did something for the vice president, Joe Biden, like years ago and he's vice president. I didn't even know who he was. Like, I don't even care. But <laughs> it's like, but that's how focused people are. And like you said, for two years, you put your head down and it's like, okay, we have to do this. We have to do this. We have to get it done. Great things happen, but you have to rely on technology and rely on people. And then if they fall, you get right back up and you start yep. something else. Yep. So I love that. Um, and like, I have a very similar, it's funny situation right now because, you know, I've been in events almost 20 years and I'm tired. Um, I'm, I'm tired of everything. Like I'm tired of <laughs> the people I'm tired. Of, really it's the expectations of um, my hometown growing in Nashville and then people thinking they're going to get way better prices. We, we have so many clients that come here from New York and LA and they're like, Oh, I can go to Nashville and have a wedding or a conference or event and save a shit ton of money. Well, yeah, you used to, uh, but things have changed. And like, I'm just the messenger. Like, don't get pissed at me. And yep. so it's just, what is, your, um, what is your biggest passion outside of everything? People. Like I, I get up and do what I do every day because I love people and I'm, I'm not like an introvert. Like I'll talk to the wall. Like I have convers full conversations with my dogs. Like I, believe I it. love people. <laughs> and so it's like, I mean, not every single day, 24 seven, but it's yeah. like that the passion of helping and doing good for others like my favorite thing recently has been, in fact, 48 hours ago, I had a girl in real estate, which I told you this, um, completely separate from another project that we've talked about, where she's like, oh my God, this is amazing. And she like breaks out in hives and I'm like, Kelly, quit. Like, it's just me and, and bloggies. <laughs> like, it's all good. So I'm like, let's come up with a 30 second intro and let's do an outro. And this is, they flip beautiful. Like they literally take homes that are like a piece of shit. So uh -huh. like, she's going to start doing a little thing dump to diamonds <laughs> because they literally get a little bit of funding and it goes a long way. And so she's like, I don't care about being on TV or anything like that. I just love to help people and help them see the potential of moving into this uh, lovely home. And so it, it is the people and it is the passion. And I think that a lot of people forget that sometimes that it's like to take a step back and what really drives you and why are you doing what you're doing? Um, exactly. And, and it is like, that is what drives you. And, and, and so to that point, like, um, you know, for me, it's always like, if there's, if there's no purpose, there's no point. Yep. Uh, and you have to have that purpose. Um, otherwise you're just floundering. And if you, if you look at a lot of like my whole message on, on Snapchat, and this was like when kind of Instagram was taking off as this, like, um, what would you call it? This fake app, <laughs> fake app of, of people sharing, sharing fake lives, uh, unrealistic lives. Um, and at the time, like, people were seeing Instagram as wow. Like, like these people look like they're having such amazing lives. And I wish my life was like that. And my whole message was to these kids was like, first of all, you like, you know, if you, there's this illusion that, you know, if I'm famous, I will be happy. And, and all these people that are famous are always portraying like I'm happy all the time. Right. And you know, that happiness is an illusion because if you were happy all the time, you wouldn't know what happiness actually means you have to have the sad times to understand what the happiness is so if you were happy all the time you'd be a robot you wouldn't actually be happy there there would be no um there'd be no ups and downs and if you look at a lot of this social influencers you know they portray these lives that are unrealistic and behind the scenes it does not look like that they're not happy all the time and you know even there's, there's a game that every single creator has to play and that that game is I need more followers because then my life will be better. Like, look at those people that have more followers than me. Their lives are amazing. I need more followers. And it's, it's an illusion and a trap because if you have a hundred followers, you say, Oh, I wish I had a thousand or 10,000. Then you have a 10,000 and you're like, Oh, I wish I had a hundred thousand. And then you get there and you're like, Oh, I wish I had a million and then 10 million and then 15 million. And by the time you're up to, you know, Justin Bieber's 150 million or whatever it is, 
you're alone because you can't relate to anybody. Every, yeah. Everybody that hangs out with you just wants your followers. So it doesn't matter which way at the scale you go, like how far up you go, you're always going to want more. And then when you're at the top, it's lonely. So yeah. do you really want to be on that spectrum or do you want to be content with, you know, what your life is like right now? Yeah. And I don't, I don't, what are your thoughts on these people who pay for followers or pay for the numbers? I mean, I don't believe in it. I'll I mean, <laughs> I, I, I don't, I don't believe in it. I, uh, but it's like, it's, it's not only hurting, it's, it's hurting you because the way the algorithm works is, you know, it's, if you're creating great content that people want to look at, you will reward yourself with more followers. So if you just have, uh, if you just fluff up your numbers, your engagement's going to look no, going to look low. Everybody's going to know that you have fake followers and it has the reverse image of what you're trying to create. So it's like, it just doesn't make sense to do that. And, you know, followers today are, are a certain currency, right? And um, if you look at, uh, uh, if you look at TikTok, for example, um, I don't know anybody who's said this publicly, but TikTok followers are fake. They don't actually have that many followers. Look at almost any profile. It's multiplied. I have no idea how much, but you can tell based on um, many of the creators who have a million followers on, um, they have a million followers on TikTok, but they only have, um, they have a million followers on TikTok, but they only have like, like 5,000 followers on Instagram. Mm -hmm. um, that, do that doesn't make any sense, right? Nope. And my, um, my, uh, you know, all the friends that I had on Vine back in the day, like they had a few million on Vine, but they also all of a sudden had a hundred thousand or 200,000 on, on Instagram. And you can just tell when, when an app is faking the numbers. So TikTok has completely faked the numbers mm -hmm. before it was TikTok. It was musically. So it's not really TikTok's fault. Uh, it was musically's fault. And, um, that, you know, that kept people around, it kept people coming back, but in the long run, when they have to change their algorithms so that they're not giving fake numbers anymore, um, then, you know, everybody all of a sudden realizes they don't have a following and then they feel fake. Um, and that's what a lot of these creators from TikTok have been telling me is, you know, th they just feel fake because of this. So, um, you don't want that. You want those genuine numbers. You want the actual feedback loop of if your video was bad or your content was bad, then it should get low numbers. And if it did get low numbers, that means it's, that means hardly anybody saw it because they put it down on the rankings. So you should be happier about that. The worst is promoting bad content um and and that going viral you know you, you never want something like that yeah so i mean the the bottom line to all of this is create content with a purpose and w like there's a formula that we follow um from uh, uh i'm trying to think of the guy's name miller's his last name but Story Brand is his book. And years ago, I went to one of his conferences for a business that I was doing consulting for to open. And he's like, it's really easy. Like, just tell a story that's relevant that you can relate to that happened to you, mm -hmm. which brings experience and give a few nuggets, what you did differently, what you know, you don't know what you don't know, and then have a, a CTA. And I'm like, what's a CTA? I'm like, you know, Googling it. <laughs> and it's like, oh, call to action. Like, what the hell does that mean? <laughs> so, you know, it's like, I, and now it's funny because I'm teaching all of this. And so when I'm using Vlog Easy, you know, I'm doing the same thing. It's like, tell a story, draw people in. And, you know, there's been times where people are like, can you talk about this? Or can you use this? Or can you comment on this? And if I don't have any experience with it, I'm not going to go on video and talk about it. I'm not comfortable doing that. And, and it's, it's fake. And I have plenty of shit that I want to talk about when it comes to productivity and going paperless and being a tech geek and, you know, helping others and being people's cheerleaders and not the girl that's like jealous of other girls when they like get more followers than me. It's like, I'm never looking at numbers. Like I'm not a numbers driven person. I, and I never have been. It's like the one-on-one -on -one and then like the small intimate classes where, you know, at the end, I have 20 people coming up to me and they're hugging me and they're like, oh my God, this is amazing. Thank you so much for being real and being honest. And mm -hmm. that's, it's funny you said the word robot because years ago, if you watch the videos that I first did years ago to, and I had like a professional company doing them from the time, which actually was the guy that I dated for a long time. And then we broke up and I'm like, well, shit, I'm not paying $50,000 for all this shit. And so then I'm like, I'm just going to do it myself. And so it's like just out of that necessity 
of I'm not going to do that. And then the engagement rate went up so much because people are like, oh, you're not a robot. Like you're relatable. You're real. So just be real. I I agree. I totally agree. Um, And and the funny part to that is like today, um, in today's society, we say to people, be authentic in social media. And people are like, wait, what? What is, I have to be authentic? And then they try to be authentic and then they try really, really, really hard to be authentic, but they don't realizing they're not realizing that they're trying the trying to be authentic is the problem in the first place. Just be yourself. Don't stop trying to to be anything, right? Yeah. Um Yeah. Totally. It, it's a funny world we live in today. One of the, well, it's so different because like what I went I'm so glad I went to school for psychology, but I probably like if I were a kid now going to college, it's like my 16 year old niece that I'm like homeschooling and but like part time now I'm like trying to teach her because all the schools, public schools, at least around my life, they're like, social media is bad. Social media is bad. In fact, she got in trouble on Snapchat (laughs) doing some things that just, I would, I'm like, if, if I wake up and see that on the homepage, like Facebook or something like, no, no, we're not doing that. So instead of teaching the kids how social media can be very positive and actually you can make a career off of it if you have a strategy. Um, So I'm like, okay, I'll take you in, you know, quit doing these bad things and I'm going to teach you how we monetize social media. And so without even asking her like, hey, do you want to start something, you know, think about this, like she's in an all day meeting with a strategy meeting with some of our clients and at the end of the day, she's like, can I have the marker for the whiteboard? And she like draws out this little like logo. And she's like, I already made it on iBook. And um, she doesn't know how to use a Mac quite yet. We're getting there because she has to use a school computer, which is like some Chromebook. I don't know. But, you know, they don't spend a ton of money on these kids and their laptops these days. But yep. I was so impressed. I'm like, you sat there all day and you were, you shed her headphones in and she was working on school, but she was also listening to what we were doing. And she's like, my top keywords are this and my, my target audience is this. And she, she's like, it's the age range of this. And that target audience is going to come from church groups and this. And then I was like, wow, I'm really impressed. But (laughs) then it's like, you have to implement that. (laughs) So yeah. and she's like, so what do I need to do? I'm like, okay, so we'll spend a day on you and developing this. It's not like you just have the idea, make some videos and make some money. Like, it's just not that yeah. easy. Um, yeah. And one of the reasons, if you'll share with our listeners, like, do you do Snapchat anymore? Like what, um, what I, happened I really don't. there? Yeah. So I ended up, <sighs> I, I, so the thing was on Snapchat was you're, you're guaranteed for your views to go down every single time you, every single time you post a story. Um, I went from 150,000 followers and every time I would post, I'd get about a thousand less views post as in like a new day posting. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I was charging a certain amount of money with brands, but every time I would post my following would would go down and there was literally no way to grow. So it just got depressing because it's like, okay, I'm going to post again. It's going to be less than last time. Um, and, uh, and then, you know, you always have to have like an incoming source of, of new fans because there's always going to be retention on, on the current ones. Um, and there just was no new source. So I saw that sink, that ship sinking. Um, but then also when we launched our first app, which was Slinger, um, I promoted it really hard on my Snapchat. Um, we had some users from it. Um, you know, I was hoping the app would just take off from just that. Um, that was a bit of a pipe dream and a lesson to learn. Um, but, uh, that burned through followers. And then by the end, by the last time I posted, I had about 10,000 followers and that was about probably two or two and a half or three years after I started posting. Um, so there's still a following on it. It's probably around 5,000 right now I would get in terms of views. Um, but, uh, there was just never any way to grow. And now there is a way to grow. Like Snapchat's finally, you know, taking care of creators um, before, uh, you know, when I was emerging on Snapchat, me and a whole bunch of creators went to Snapchat and said, Hey, like, you know, we see all these new trends emerging on, on the platform. And we, we think influencers could use this in the future. And Snapchat basically made it a policy not to work with us, which blew my mind, but again, wow. wasn't surprising. 
Um, and they said, you know, we're, we're just going to be a chat app. We'll never be an influencer platform. And, and it was just crazy because I was like, you know, it was so obvious that creators could use it and help it grow, obviously. And that's what ended up happening after uh, I left Snapchat. Um, but uh, but uh, it, there's a very common trend between tech companies in that they will they will not be vulnerable enough to actually listen to their users and and bring them in and 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 be responsible for things that they say. Um, you know, when Vine was growing back in the day, um, for the first year and a half, they hardly talked to their creators. Um, and then when Instagram dropped video, um, all this, all the, all the Viners started to leave. And then Vine was like, no, 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 come back. We love you guys. And they started throwing parties for them, but it was too late. And when Snapchat did the same thing to us before, you know, we even got started almost, um, it was just so obvious that that ship was going to sink because they were not listening to feedback. Um, even from people who, who are known as their original, you know, creators and creator community. Um, so I said, you know, I want to build apps. The reason I left was because I wanted to build apps by creators for creators. I kind of wanted to be the last stand for creators in that, you know, they're going to, they can trust me that I'm also, I'm not only, not only am I going to look out for their best interest, but I'm always going to be vulnerable enough to listen to them and, and risk having my head chopped off. Um, if I do something wrong and the big guys don't want that, they kind of want to keep distant and say, these are the creators, we're the tech guys. But if you really want to build apps that provide value for that community, you have to have, you have to be part of that community. You can't separate yourself. Um, so it's so obvious that Vine, Snapchat, TikTok is now doing it. Um, Facebook and Google, I, I would say are, are, are doing a relatively good job, but still they're such behemoths that they, they're, kind of rule is to throw money at things um and not and i would say not truly truly care about the mindset of a creator um but for me i'm obsessed with it i i, I think about it all the time i'm always wondering what can we build that's going to save creators time um and uh and uh we're always listening to, the, to our audience where we hold monthly events um online um uh basically for um uh, another app that we have uh, that I haven't mentioned yet, but uh, is for creators as well. Um, and yeah. So before, because I do want you to mention the other app because I think it is very relevant, but a few things to know here, like the most important thing as an entrepreneur and a business owner over the years that have helped me more than anything is asking for feedback. And it seems so simple. It's like I do so many consultings for venues and restaurant owners and all these other entrepreneurs. And they're like, how am I going to get people? And how am I going to market? And how am I going to do this? Like one guy literally bought a building behind his restaurant. He probably has five or 600 people a day in there because it's like an, an Italian grocery store. They do lunch, they do dinner, they do brunch on Sundays. He's got games outside and he's him and his wife are awesome and the community love them. And so I'm like, why would you not like put like even like the dollar store tent signs that says something about like you guys catering and you can host private events right behind here. Like we'll work out the parking, we can get valet. And he's like, oh my gosh, I feel like such an idiot. But sometimes when you're so close to something and you're starting something else, it's like, how do I really get this up and going? It, it almost like makes you a little handicap. And so it's so refreshing when I just, you can go online and like do a poll and ask people. And so instead of like releasing a brand new product, that's probably going to cost me between 30 and $50,000 to build. I'm going to beta test it and I'm going to ask people yeah. for feedback. In fact, one of our membership programs, we did a beta test on it, which apparently I was an idiot. I did it for 90 days and everybody else around me in my little entrepreneur group, they're like, why would you do that? You're an idiot. 90 days, blah, 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 and 30 days, even two weeks. And I'm like, shit, I didn't know. Like, I'm just trying to provide value. And then when I learned from it though, the whole outcome was if people don't, pay for something and they don't have skin in the game, then they don't, exactly. they just don't care about it. Exactly. And so exactly. it's like, we would have these weekly zoom calls and I would get on and they could ask me anything. And then, you know, I would have specific subjects. And so after the 90 days, I'm like, screw this. Like if people aren't going to be engaged and they're not going to implement what we're learning, like I'm not excited. It's not about the money. <laughs> like I'm yep. just not excited about it. So I'll just go find something else to do that I'm excited about. 
Um, one of my questions was like, which I already know this, but like what is special and unique about Vlog Easy from all the other vlog apps out there? And yep. so I know you and I have talked about some new thing. You know, it is still a new app and I can tell you guys that if you use it and there's a little bit of a glitch, which nothing's perfect, like reach out and ask for help instead of just getting frustrated. Like I gave my phone, I had a call. So I went upstairs in the office and she's downstairs. I'm like, Hey, edit this, fix it. And like post it on my story. And like behind my back, she's like over there, Marco Polo and Chris, she's like, Hey, this isn't going to work and blah, blah, blah. And she knows how aggressive I am and getting things to work. So she, but she like troubleshot and like figured it out with your help. And it's like, that is one of the most important things is like when you make yourself accessible to people and show them like, Hey, I want this to work for you. Like they yeah. will be your biggest advocate. I've had so many people. They're like, do you, or do you work for vlog easy now? Like, is this, I'm, <laughs> no, I'm like, not at all. Like, it's like, do I work for Apple? No, I don't. Like, it's just, it makes my life easier and I wouldn't be able to do what I do today without these tools. So I'm going to like scream it at the top of the mountain that everyone who wants to be doing this and vlogging daily or every other day all this time that it can save you because it's going to help you. And that brings me happiness, as cheesy as it sounds. But what are some other things that are coming out? Like um, already, yep. I can tell you, I love that Vlog Easy does vertical and horizontal, which BitSmash did not do that. Y'all, I was like totally rigging up this shit. So I would like have my computer and record it on QuickTime. So I only had to say it once. And then I like had all these different stands with my phone vertical doing bit smash. And then I'd have to go into iMovie and edit it. I'm getting, I'm talking all geeky now, but it's like the stuff that I used to do. I'm like, oh my God, because I hate doing the same thing twice. Um, it just, it's not a good use of time. So what are some things yep. that are coming with vlog easy i know of one thing you told me that i think is really exciting but what are some new features coming yeah so um our whole focus is going to be on what what saves creators the most amount of time um like which which of those features because you know that is the utility that that that, that makes the app have high utility so the first one is is the jump cut feature um like i mentioned it automatically jump cut edits for you you don't have to do any editing um there's a few other features like add text, add drawing. Those are really simple. Um, and uh, we have another integration called Yarn. Um, we partnered with a company called Yarn. And basically, uh, you can search TV and movie clips just by typing in any quote. And it'll basically go into the, the database and search all the TV shows and movies that have that exact quote. And you can instantly add that to your vlog. Um, and there's a, you know, for a lot of the top vloggers, that's, that's a huge trend is like including movie clips as, as like extra little sides, um, in, in, in your, in your vlog and we've streamlined that process. So you don't have to do any outside, anything outside of the app. Um, another feature that we're about to launch is, um, by the way, the current bugs on, on the app, we haven't, we haven't updated it in about a month. So, you know, a lot of them have been fixed, um, in this upcoming update. Um, and this upcoming update is also going to have something called cloud syncing. So every time you create a vlog, it'll be saved in the cloud. All of your editing will be saved in the cloud. So if you wanted to switch phones or if you wanted, let's say you had somebody that was doing a, a vlog in, in Iceland and you wanted to edit it in LA, you could just get them to sign into an account in Iceland and you can have that exact same vlog instantly appear, um, on your phone in LA. Um, and that means all your vlogs are saved in the cloud forever. So if you ever want to switch devices or if you ever want to go back to any of your old vlogs, they're always going to be there. Um, and then the next feature we're building after that is uh, copyright free music integration. So uh, you can basically just type in uh, your genre of music or you can basically browse different types of music, some uh, music that's trending or popular. Um, and then you can easily add that to your vlog with, without having to uh, use anything outside the app. Um, and then after that, uh, we're hoping to build something that will automatically, um, um, if you want to do like B-roll shots, which is a very common uh, trend in vlogging, uh, basically we're going we're gonna to allow you to take a whole bunch of B-roll shots um, and then choose the music and then we'll edit the, the B-roll shots to the beat of the music. So it will automatically just will automatically just compile all the different shots into, you know, one kind of continuous uh, vlog and then it'll be to the beat of the music. So the idea is 
you know, even if you're not a professional vlogger or an editor, you can basically have a professionally edited blog. That would be a freaking dream. Um, thankfully, I grew up um, on eight counts dancing and being a competitive gymnast. So whenever I was, um, I never took an editing class or anything. It's just I was uh, managing a company for seven years and dating the owner. <laughs> so I was just picked up on it, you know. And so yeah. um, I just like the, watching the analytics from music to motion and um, it's funny, the guys would vote on it. They're like, the, the, viewer, the viewers are going to click off of it if you don't keep the, I don't know, the musical score up. It, I mean, they would have knockdown, drag out fights. And so, it, I mean, it was really funny. And I would just keep my mouth shut, which is really hard. And I'm like, well, the numbers don't lie. This is where I really, really bought into A-B split testing. <laughs> and like, but that is, that would be amazing because a lot of people don't live in the eight count of hearing the beat and they don't understand musical score and they definitely don't understand audio, audio yeah. engineering. It's a whole other thing. Um, but I didn't even know that. Like, that's amazing to the beat of the music. I would say um, you mentioned something to me about noise cancellation, like in the background. Is is that something? Is that called something? So if you wanted to do jump, jump cuts, because right now, I mean, it works best if there's not a bunch of background noise. So yep. is there anything that will help that in the future by chance? Yep. So, um, so right now it only works in quiet spaces because we're basically taking, we're basically measuring where there is noise and where there isn't, and we're removing the parts of video where there's no noise. So, if you're in like a train station or something and there's a whole crowd of people, um, it's not going to be, it won't work properly. But uh, we are building something right now. Um, it's, it might take a while, but it's basically going to be able to detect where there's human voice and where there's something el else other than human voice or if it's like a background human voice. Um, and then basically the idea is you should be able to, I don't know, be at a concert even. Uh, that would be the dream. Uh, wow. Be at a concert and be able to uh, vlog um, uh, where it's cutting to your, where you're talking. That would be amazing. My favorite feature, in fact, I was doing a coaching call with one of my clients in New York yesterday. And the, the, the questions people ask me, it's just, it makes me laugh because these are the questions I was asking myself like a year ago. And she's like, Ange, how do you get like those on your Instagram story? It's like these little dashes at the top. And I'm like, do you mean like the 15 second increments of the video? And she's like, yeah, yeah. How do you do that? And she's like, it's like you start in the morning and then, you know, you're on there and you're like, good night. And she's like, and then I just realized I watched you for seven minutes, but it's like these 15 minute increments. I'm like, that's what vlog easy is in that. And she's done it. Like she has, she flew to Nashville and spent almost a week with me, like learning how to do this. We did this whole social media. She hired my strategist. Like, it's awesome. And um, wow. she's like, Oh, I'm like, okay, but listen, two different projects. Okay. Project one is doing weekly videos with your ring light and your stand and the jump cutting and it's quiet and you've got your branding background colors in the back. And you know, that's project one because we batch our videos now. So I'll take a whole day. Sometimes I change shirts and earrings. Sometimes I don't. She's like, how do you know? Cause I taught her how to save it on her phone, like with the whole thing, you know, maybe being four five, six, seven minutes and then how to auto slice for the 15 second stories. And she's like, but how do you know? I'm like, well, if I'm kind of busy and being lazy, I'll just change earrings. <laughs> and you can know by looking at the time in your camera roll. And to me, this is common. She's like, oh my God, I never thought of that. And so as, as she's like, okay, that's project one. What's project two? I'm like, project two is actually vlogging, <laughs> which is kind of what the app is for in the first place. I just use it differently. And she's like, yeah, but that's going to make me money. And I'm like, yes, eventually, but we have to build up <laughs> A stable audience first. <laughs> yeah. And so I'm like, you know, in vlogging, you know, it's start in the morning and throughout the day. She's like, well, I already did two site visits today. I'm like, well, why didn't you video that? She's like, because the client's there. I'm like, I do videos in front of my clients with my clients all the time. They actually love it. And they see that I'm invested in like 100% putting their videos in Dropbox. And I share it with all the vendors and verbally and in motion explain exactly what the plan is and people like show up and they know what's going on. So like, that's a good thing. And she's yep. like, but I should share that. I'm like, 
BTS behind the scenes gets more engagement than like all the finished products of the beauty that like it takes 250 people to create for an event. She's like, oh, oh my gosh. So it's like, you know, but I didn't know this stuff either, you know, but it's so exciting to like teach people how to do these things. So keep doing what you're doing because you're doing a good thing. Um, one last big question, cost investment. Like I know some of the other apps, I think I wasted like $150 on the app store that one Saturday night when I was downloading like all these apps just to try them. Some of them had like a week trial. Some of them were like $29.99 on a month. I was to the point where I'm like, I don't care. I'm going to do pay for a month and like try to use them until like literally my prayers were answered. I'm like, oh my God. So, um, and you know, and then I had to go back and cancel all my freaking subscriptions through iTunes, which was kind of annoying. But um, right now, do, is there a plan for a monthly subscription or cost or what is the investment for Vlog Easy? Yep. So we're, we're about to launch our subscription model um, and we're actually going to be targeting uh, a premium subscription. Um, so we're going to be charging $20 a month, $19.99. Um, or if they want to pay for the full year, it'll be $10. Um, basically we, you know, we're, we're a startup where we've been funded, but we're also running out of capital. Um, I've, I've told you about that. Yeah. And even if we do run out of capital, we know there's enough utility in this app to keep it alive. So, um, I, I think we've decided as a team, you know, we'd get part-time jobs just to keep, make sure that the app stays alive. Um, and then eventually can be profitable. Um, so we're, we're going to be targeting high end, um, uh, and premium. Um, most apps, most video apps are, are, you know, the subscriptions maybe five or $6. We're actually gonna be charging 1999 a month. Um, but that's based on, we're measuring based on how much utility and how much time we're, we're saving people when creating content. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we've been telling people 20 bucks a month and they said, that's it. You know, yeah. uh, they I'm can't believe that 20 bucks. Because, you know, it would cost 20 bucks just to, just to pay somebody for an hour to edit a vlog. Yep. Uh, but instead, you can have that for the entire month. So you're actually saving money by, by investing that much. And if you want to do the full year, it's only $9.99 per month. So um, that's even cheaper. Um, and every single feature we're going to bang out in this product is going to be something that's high utility, saves people time, um, and therefore money. Like I totally foresee myself like later today we have a zoom call with a large production company and she oftentimes gets asked to do these smaller projects, smaller meaning under $2 million, you guys. So like all these real estate agents, like that's the hot thing right now. Like they want to know how to do videos. They want to know how to do vlogs. They want to know how to showcase their homes and, um, they, but they complain, they're like, this takes too long and blah, blah, blah. Like I foresee in the next year teaching and like having conferences where these people will come, we'll show them how to use it. Like we could have a really fun contest with it too. Um, not that yeah. I'm competitive or anything, <laughs> but it's just, it's such an amazing tool. And for people who don't know how to edit and don't know, um, you don't have to have perfect lighting. Things don't have to be perfect guys. Like my God, I used, um, well it was bit smash back then, but I was in San Diego teaching at a conference and, um, and it was my day. Tuesday is my day to post. And the girls that were with me, they're like, you're not going to make it today because we've got these after parties and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, bullshit. I'm going to make it. Watch me. We're going to walk and love And then they're like, but the lighting and then there's horns. And I'm like, I don't care. And so I did it. I walked and I didn't fall. And it was funny because I did have to like stop it probably 20 times walking two miles from like one of the parties to the other um, because there was so much background noise. Like it, and like then a train came. So at this point I turned it on. I'm like, I'm totally just going to make fun of myself. But the point of the story is you have to commit. You have to commit yep. to your audience. If you say you're going to do something, do it and yep. follow through with it. Like that's it. Hundred so percent. If um if people want to find out more, I think they should just download the app. What do you think? I agree. I agree. It's only on iPhone for now, unfortunately. But um yeah, you guys should download it. It's free to use. Um if you want to keep the watermark on there, you can use as much as you want. Um and if you want to support us, feel free to subscribe. Yeah. And then really quickly before we go, there is another app that you're creating that I would love for you to just drop a little info on 
pocket flicks and what that is doing and what the goal of that yep. app is going to be. Yep. So when we, when we split up bid smash uh, into two products, we made uh, the editor turn into vlog easy. And then um, since nobody wants another social network, we thought, you know, so nobody is still, nobody has created like a series based vertical video app, um, you know, like Netflix for vertical video. Um, and so we decided we're going to be the first one to do that. Um, and we built that in about a month and a half. Um, and it's launched now in the app store. There's a whole bunch of, uh, mini series from indie creators that are already up there. There's a whole wave of new ones that are going to be launching. Um, and it's crazy because these, these people are creating content for free, but they, they truly believe in the vision of, um, of, uh, of, of, you know, what we're trying to, what we're trying to do. And that vision is basically trying to be the last stop for, creators and helping them get paid for content. Um, the way it works is they get a portion, they get 40% of the subscription pool. Um, Apple takes 30%, PocketFlix takes 30%, and then 40% is put into the pool amongst the creators themselves. So every week we calculate how much total view time a series gets for a creator compared to all the other series. And then we give them that portion of, of the subscription pool. Um, we, we basically took a, a page out of Spotify's model uh, when rewarding creators. And we have a whole bunch of other ways that we're going to help creators get paid. Um, but the idea is, you know, we have one tool that's going to be the best video creation tool on the market. And then the other one that's going to be the best place to view content uh, in the vertical format. Um, and uh, yeah, so everybody's, everybody's telling us we're crazy for, for launching two apps and we should focus on one. Um, and I, I've, I've never really done anything conventionally. Um, I feel like that's super conventional wisdom. Um, and it sounds like the right thing to do, but I just know deep in my heart, we're doing the right things on both ends. Um, and I know the worst case scenario, you know, we can, we can get jobs doing other things if we run out of capital, um, and we'll, we'll survive on, you know, the subscription as, as much as we can, but, uh, but we're, we're going full steam with both of them. And I, I truly believe both are about to be, about to be successes. I love it. It's awesome. I wait, I could talk to you all day. Um, but guys go and download vlog easy V as in Victor vlog. Give it a try. If you are scared to post it out there, just send it to me. I'm happy to give you feedback <laughs> and tell you about your formula. So just follow the formula, tell a story, give a nugget and have a call to action. So Chris, thank you so much for your time today. This was a thank super, you. super, super fun podcast and be sure to tune in next week for the next episode on weddings unveiled everybody have a great day bye bye if you found this podcast helpful please share it with your friends and i'm so very grateful if you will leave a review be sure you are a subscriber so you never ever miss the juicy details of weddings unveiled also, be sure that you're a part of my email list, and if not, you can sign up at AngelaProfit.com where I share valuable resources and exclusive products with only my subscribers. Before I go, I want to ask you, if you have a story or a product to share with the wedding and event industry, please let me know. To be considered as a guest on Weddings Unveiled, visit AngelaProfit.com and submit a podcast guest form. Until next time, remember to stay productive and profitable. You've been listening to Weddings Unveiled with Angela Profit. Join us next time for more insights to help you build a productive, profitable wedding or event business. For more great resources, head over to AngelaProfit.com.